Suppose there's a population of horse-like animals and they're living on grassy plains. But suppose these horse-like animals have teeth that are small and not great at grinding tough, coarse grass. The animals can survive if they can find soft fruit to eat, but without fruit, they tend to go hungry. Now, suppose it just so happens that some of the animals in the group have teeth at the back, molar teeth, that are taller and have ridges. These animals find that they can use their ridged molars to grind the tough grass. The animals that have these ridges on their teeth are more likely to survive than some of the other animals. And if they're more likely to survive, they're more likely to have offspring. OK, so animals with ridged teeth are more likely to have offspring than animals with small teeth. Why does that matter? Some things can be inherited by offspring from their parents. So if having ridged teeth is something that can be inherited, then the offspring of the horsey animals that have tall ridged teeth are also likely to have tall ridged teeth. And over many, many, many generations, we end up with more and more animals with more and more tall ridged teeth. So here's where it gets really impressive. These little changes keep on happening generation after generation, and gradually they add up. After many, many thousands of generations, we're seeing animals that now look quite different. Here are the descendants of Eohippus after 20 million years, and now they look very different indeed. This is now a new species of animal, and this is how a new species can come to exist.